Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to do a quick flight review of this Esheen E58, this little Mavic Pro style looking clone uh, toy. Uh, Brian over at True Drone Reviews sent me this. If you s subscribe to my channel, you probably saw I did an unboxing of this a few, um, a week or probably two weeks ago or so. Finally, the weather's cooperated enough. I think I can get in the air. There is a bit of breeze today, but the way this thing flies from what I've seen in Brian's videos, it shouldn't have too much problem handling. Now, I've not flown it myself at all, and typically I do fly stuff ahead of time, but Brian's gone over all this several times. He's flown this, and he just wanted to see what I thought about it, so I'm going to just go ahead and get up in the air. Like I said, I covered a lot of the basics in the unboxing, but I don't exactly have a flight time and stuff like I typically do. Now, here it is bound up, the controller and the app. Now, it looks like there's some lag on that Wi-Fi FPV, which is pretty common. I don't know how well this is going to show up in the camera. It looks like it has a wide-angle lens. That looks pretty nice. Now, it does have a spot here for a micro USB, uh, excuse me, micro USB, <laughs> I always want to say that, micro SD card slot. So I have one in there, hopefully it records to it. Um, it's like a 32 gig, so I, ho I hope it's not too big. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and record that footage here to the, the card, that rear red light will flash when it's recording. You get your white lights in the front, just like the Mavic Pro looks. You can tilt this camera if you want to. I'm gonna leave it all the way up. Um, you wanna initiate the recording. I, I believe it's the rear, or the, excuse me, the front top button here. There's a recording and that will make it flash if you're using a micro, S, uh, micro U, um, SD card. Well, I want to see USB again. If you use the app, this light doesn't flash. I think you're just going to record the FPV feed. This will eliminate any kind of um, drop frames. You know, so even though it's going to be laggy, um, if you use the SD card, you're going to get the uh, raw footage right off the camera. There shouldn't be any uh, drop frames, so it should, you know, be a better footage and better quality. You don't ever want to record the FPV feed on your phone unless you absolutely have to. So that covers all that. I'm going to go ahead and set it on the ground here, and I'm going to start recording. Hopefully, we'll be able to see. I'm trying to put it in the shadow here. I got the red light there. I'm going to go ahead and press the top left button. Now that, that just took a picture. A quick one just takes a photo. So you want to do a long press and now it continually is blinking. So we should be set to go ahead and take off. I'm not going to even worry about the app now because I'm using the micro SD card. I'll just kind of comment on the lagginess and stuff. Like I, said, I don't fly these. These are gimmicky to fly and buy a Wi-Fi FPV. There's just too much lag. So let's go ahead and take it up. Really nice and quiet. There's a y'all. Boy, this is really, really nice. I can tell just, I, from Brian's videos I could tell, but I'm really already impressed just a few seconds in. Let's see, one, I think the top one here is your rates. There's your middle rate, and there's the highest rate. Looks to me like that's, that's the lowest rate, that the y'all is the same. But I imagine the, the pitch is gonna increase quite a bit. So there's the middle rate, and there's the highest rate. I can tell the pitch increases. It'd be kind of nice if the yaw was proportional as well, but you know, that's not that. I mean, it's usually it does, but to me, that's not a huge deal. As nice as this flies, the yaw is not too crazy fast on the highest rate or too slow on the lowest. But if you're a beginner, it's nice at times to have that, uh, you know, the. Uh, if, you're, if you're a beginner, to have the lower, slower yaw. At least my phone's even gone to sleep. I don't know if it just doesn't think it's doing anything with that app open. It doesn't really matter though because I'm not recording the screen and I'm not really using the app. I'm just recording. I'm going to back it up here. I can see that red light still flashing. So we should have some footage here in the review. And I think the camera on this is pretty decent. And the wide angle lens actually is better if you want to try to fly this by FPV because you get much better uh, uh, field of view. Wow, this flies really nice. It's sporty. Like I said it's probably a five to ten mile per hour breeze at times, and it's having no issues. This is super. Really, uh, I want to thank Brian again for sending this to me. I know he liked this. He's had it for a while, and I know he did at least two videos with it. One of them was within the last month. He took this one up for another flight. Let's see if we can do flips. The flips is going to be the rear right button. I don't like these multiple bumper ones because sometimes it gets confusing. You can't remember which one you got to press. Let's see if, I, if it'll flip. There it flips. I don't think it'll flip forward or back. It just does right and left. There's right. There's left. Let's try forward. No. 
back, no. So you can only do side rolls. Some of the quadcopters do that. Um, just depends on the design of the, of the quad. Those white lights do help with orientation. The, some of the glare today is certainly causing me some issues. I believe the gyro calibration was like both sticks down to the right, which is pretty common. It's got a bit of drift on it here today, but I don't, I'm gonna trim it up a little bit. I don't think that's a really a gyro issue as much as it's just, maybe Brian may have had it trimmed specifically for what conditions he was flying under. Sometimes the wind will trick you and you have to trim it up to get these to fly in the conditions, and then another day, you need to trim it a little bit differently. Wow, this is super. Yeah, my phone's asleep. It may still be, the FPV app may still be open, but it doesn't matter. We're just getting the footage. Um, this is a line of sight flyer for me. There's a pretty good breeze here right to left. Boy, it's... Wow, oh, that is nice. It really gets going, and I do have a little trouble at times locating those white lights. Let me bring, so then my orientation can be a little tricky, so you have to just be careful. And it's really pitched forward like that. I'm having trouble locating them. When you see them right there, it's going pretty good. Looks like it was blinking at me. And it may be that the front blink also when it's recording. That's very, very possible. But I don't know what you do then when you get the low voltage. I always, some of those can be confusing because the low voltage usually will uh, flash as well. Let's hope I don't. Boy, it's really sporty. So I lost my orientation just a little bit there. When you do that, don't panic and start giving it a bunch of inputs. You're not just gonna make it worse. Give it small inputs. Don't give it a, a whole bunch because you end up flying away. You have to kind of have to look and see is it getting smaller. You know, you'll learn tricks the more you fly. But if I lose sight of those white lights there, it is not easy to keep orientation. So that'd be about my only complaint on this guy. And some of that's because I'm recording video now. And when I'm recording, I'm losing, you know, it's flashing. I don't know how long this flies. The battery on this, I don't remember it. I know it wasn't real, real huge. Well, I think that should be enough to let's see on the video. I see, a, it looks like maybe a slight lag in the inputs at times, but I think some of that's the wind really fighting this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and land him here so I can stop recording without messing up while I'm flying. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a, a long press here. And I think that's gonna stop recording. Yeah, we got a solid red light now. And the light, lights in the front are solid white. So let's go ahead, we'll take it up now and just fly a little bit more here with the, uh, um, without the uh, video being recorded, just do a little more line of sight. You can also manually take it out. I did the automatic takeoff here. Just pull sticks down and out, start the props, and you can just give it throttle. You just want to fly it like that. It should be a little easier now to maintain orientation, I think, because you're not going to lose those white lights blinking. But I think some of it was also the pitch. Let me see. Now when you turn it a little bit like that, just a little to the side, those lights get obscured. Super flyer though. You know, this is one of the nicest little, I guess you'd say it's a mini drone, especially with this being a, you know, a clone of the Mavic. If you're someone who really wants to have a Mavic Pro and can't afford it, this is probably the nicest one I've seen in terms of toy clones. You fly this thing out far enough from you, people are definitely gonna think you have a Mavic Pro because you can't judge the scale size of something very far away. It sure looks like one. You know, I've, I've reviewed several other, the uh, Vizios make some uh, Mavic Pro clones and they're really good, but I, th I like this one the best. It's so just sporty and, and flies nice. Um, I like the micro SD card so you can get your footage locally and not have to afford your phone. And uh, just like the overall look, it's just identical. I mean, I'm so shocked that they can even make something like this without you know, patent issues, but sometimes they can get by with that in China, where here in the United States, this would be a major problem. Looks like we probably ran out of battery there, so let's see if I go ahead and lock the prompts. I think that was a low voltage. It sure came down and landed itself. That was quite a bit of flight time, though. I don't know what we got between the two. 
it's got that had to have been well over five minutes um, if I remember, I don't know if I'll put it in the video or not. Sometimes I forget to check the flight time when I'm editing, but uh, really nice little drone. Again, thanks Brian of True Drone Reviews for sending this over to me. I know he's um, got several uh, videos up of this, so if you want to go look at some other ones, go check his out. Just if I don't remember to put it in the links, just uh, in the description, I should say, just search for True Drone Reviews. There's nobody else with a name like his. You'll find him. So, all right, guys, that should wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoyed the flight, and I think you'll like this little drone. Uh, Eshin is a Banggood brand. That's who uh, owns that brand. So this would be available from Banggood. I don't think you can get it from the other Chinese vendors. Um, unless there's another company that makes this. As far as I know, it's just a bang good. You can probably, in the United States, you know, there's a good chance you can find this on Amazon, though I'm not for sure. A lot of e-sheen stuff is sold on Amazon. You probably also could find it on eBay. I don't know what it costs. Um, if I could find it, I'll include a, a purchase link in the description in case you guys are interested because this is fantastic. Just super little, uh, little uh, Mavic Pro clone. All right, guys, that should wrap up this review. Um, please do subscribe you know I appreciate the subscriptions we've just hit a million channel views and I know that's nothing for some of the channels that get those for every video they upload but for me that's huge and uh, I really want to thank you guys for that we're also around 3,500 subscribers so that's that's great for what, what I'm doing um, be sure to click that bell so you know whenever I do upload a new video so you're notified as always guys have a great day the power of the dark side, 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 side.